King Benjamin's speech. And these are the words which he spake to them and caused to be written, saying, My brethren, ye that have assembled yourselves together, you that can hear my words which I shall speak unto you this day, for I have not commanded you to come up hither to trifle with the words which I shall speak, but that ye should hearken unto me, and open your ears that ye may hear, and your hearts that ye may understand, and your minds that the mysteries of God may be unfolded to your view. I have not commanded you to come up hither that you should fear me, or that you should think that I of myself am more than a mortal man. But I am like as yourselves, subject to all manner of infirmities in body and mind. But yet I was chosen by my, this people, and was uh, consecrated by my Father, and was suffered by the hand of the Lord, that I should serve you with all the might, mind, and strength which the Lord hath granted unto me. I say unto you, that as I have been suffered to spend my days in your service, even up to this time, and have not sought gold, nor silver, nor any manner of riches from you. Neither have I suffered that you should be confined in dungeons, nor that you should make slaves one of another, nor that you should murder, or plunder, or steal, or commit adultery, nor even have I suffered that you should commit any manner of wickedness, and have taught you that you should keep the commandments of the Lord in all things which he hath commanded you. And even I myself have labored with mine own hands that I might serve you, and that you should not be laden with taxes, and that there should nothing come upon you which was grievous to be borne. And of all these things which I have spoken, ye yourselves are witnesses this day. Yet, my brethren, I have not done these things that I might boast, neither do I tell these things that thereby I might accuse you. But I tell you these things that ye may know that I can answer a clear conscience before God this day. Behold, I say unto you, that because I said unto you that I had spent my days in your service, I do not desire to boast, for I had only been in the service of God. And behold, I tell you these things that you may learn wisdom, that you may learn that, that when ye are in the service of your fellow beings, ye are only in the service of your God. Behold, ye have called me your king, and if I, whom ye call your king, do labor to serve you, then ought not ye to labor to serve one another? And, and behold also, if I, whom ye call your king, who has spent his days in your service, and yet has been in the service of God, do merit any thanks from you. Oh, how ye ought to thank your heavenly king. I say unto you, my brethren, that if you should render all the thanks and praise that your whole soul has power to possess to that God who has created you, and has kept and preserved you, and has caused that ye should rejoice, and has granted that ye should live in peace one with another. I say unto you that if ye should serve him who has created you and is from the beginning, and is preserving you from day to day by lending you breath, that ye may live and move and do according to your own will, and even supporting you from one moment to another, I, I say if ye should serve him with all your whole souls, Yet ye would be unprofitable servants. And behold, all that he requires of you is to keep his commandments. And he hath promised that if ye would keep his commandments, ye should prosper in the land. And he never doth vary from that which he hath said. Therefore, if ye do keep his commandments, he doth bless you and prosper you. And now, in the first place, he hath created you, and granted unto you your lives, for which ye are indebted unto him. And secondly, he doth require that ye should do as he hath commanded you, for which, if you do, he doth immediately bless you, and therefore he hath paid you, and ye are still indebted unto him, and are, and will be, forever and ever. Therefore, of what have you to boast? And I ask you, can ye say out of yourselves, I answer you nay, Ye cannot say that ye are even as much as the dust of the earth, yet ye were created of the dust of the earth. But behold, it belongeth to him who created you. And I, even I, whom ye call your king, am no better than ye yourselves are, for I also am of the dust. And ye behold that I am old, and am about to yield up this mortal frame to its mother earth. Wherefore I say unto you that I had served you, walking with a clear conscience before God. Even so, at this time, I say unto you that I 
would require that you would assemble yourselves together, that I might stand blameless before God, that your blood should not come upon me when I shall stand to be judged of God of the things whereof he hath required, he hath commanded me concerning you. I say unto you that I have caused that you should assemble yourselves together, that I might rid my garments of your blood, that my whole soul, um, that at this time I go, I go down to my grave, and that I might go down in peace, and that my immortal spirit should, that, and that my immortal spirit should join the choirs above in singing the just praises of God. And moreover, I say unto you that I have caused that you should assemble yourselves together, that I might declare unto you that I can no longer be your teacher, nor your king. For behold, even at this time my whole frame doth tremble exceedingly before you, um, that, but the Lord God, um, Lord God doth support. doth support me, and doth, um, and hath suffered me that I should speak unto you. And hath commanded me that I should declare unto you at this time that my son Mosiah is a king and a ruler over you. And now, my brethren, I would that ye should do as ye have hitherto done, as ye have kept my commandments and also the commandments of my father, and have prospered, and have been kept from falling into the hands of your enemies. Even so, if ye shall keep the commandments of my son, or the commandments of God, which shall be delivered unto you by him. You shall prosper in the land, and your enemies shall have no power over you. But, O my people, beware lest, thou shalt, beware lest there shall arise contentions among you, and, and lest ye hearken unto that evil spirit which is spoken of by my father Mosiah. For behold, there is a woe pronounced upon him who listeth to obey that spirit. For if he listeth to obey him, and remaineth and dieth in his own sins, the same drinketh damnation unto his own soul. For if he for he receiveth for his wages an eternal punishment, having transgressed the laws of God contrary to his own knowledge. I say unto you that there are not any among you, except it be your little children, that have not been taught concerning these things. But what knoweth that ye are eternally indebted to your heavenly Father, to render to him all that ye have and are, and have been taught concerning these things, which contain the prophecies which have been spoken by the holy prophets, even down to the time that our father, Lehi, left Jerusalem. And also all that has been spoken by them until now. And behold also, they spake that which was commanded them of the Lord, therefore they are just and true. And now I say unto you, my brethren, that after ye have known and have been taught these things, that ye, if ye shall transgress and go contrary to that which has been spoken, that ye do withdraw yourselves from the Spirit of the Lord, that it may have no place in you to guide you in wisdom's paths, that ye may be blessed, prospered, and preserved. I say unto you that the man that doeth this, the same cometh out in open rebellion against God. Therefore he listeth to obey the evil spirit, and doth become an enemy to all righteousness. Therefore the Lord hath no place in him, for he dwelleth not in unholy temples. Therefore, if that man repenteth not, and remaineth and dieth an enemy to God, uh, the demands of divine justice do awaken his immortal soul to a lively state of his own, to a lively sense of his own guilt, which doth cause him to shrink from the presence of the Lord, and doth fill his breast with guilt and pain and anguish, which is like an unquenchable fire, whose flame ascendeth up for ever and ever. And now I say unto you, that mercy hath no claim on that man. Therefore his final doom is to endure a never-ending torment. O oh, all ye old men, and also ye young men, and all ye little children, who can understand my words, for behold, I have spoken plainly unto you, that ye might understand. I pray that ye should awake to a remembrance of the awful situation of those who have fallen into transgression. And, and moreover, I, I desire that ye would consider upon the blessed and happy state of those that keep the commandments of God. For behold, they are blessed in all things, both temporal and spiritual. And if they hold out faithful to the end, 
they are received into heaven, that thereby they may dwell with God in a state of never-ending happiness. Oh, remember, remember that these things are true, for the Lord God has spoken it. And again, my brethren, I would call your attention, for I have somewhat more to speak unto you. For behold, I have things to tell you concerning that which is to come. And the things which I shall tell you are made known unto me by an angel of God. And he said unto me, Awake. And I awoke, and behold, he stood before me. And he said unto me, Awake, Awake and, and hear the words which I shall tell thee. For behold, I am come to declare unto you the glad tidings of great joy. For the Lord hath heard thy prayers, and hath judged of thy righteousness, and hath sent me to declare unto thee that thou mayest rejoice and that thou mayest declare unto thy people, that they may also be filled with joy. For behold, the time cometh, and is not far distant, that with power the Lord omnipotent who reigneth, who was and is from all eternity to all eternity, shall come down from heaven among the children of men, and shall dwell in a tabernacle of clay, and shall go forth among men, working mighty miracles, such as healing the sick, raising the dead, causing the lame to walk, the blind to receive their sight, and the deaf to hear, and curing all manner of diseases. And he shall cast out devils, or the evil spirits which dwell in the hearts of the children of men. And lo, he shall suffer temptations, and pain of body, hunger, thirst, and fatigue, even more than man can suffer, except it be unto death. For behold, blood cometh from every pore, so great shall be his anguish for the wickedness and the abominations of his people. And he shall be called Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Father of heaven and earth the creator of all things from the beginning, and his mother shall be called Mary. And lo, he cometh unto his own, that salvation might come unto the children of men, even through faith on his name. And even after all this, they shall consider him a man, and say that he hath a devil, and shall scourge him, and shall crucify him. And he shall rise the third day from the dead, and behold, he standeth to judge the world, and behold, all these things are done, that a righteous judgment might come upon the children of men. For behold, and also his blood atoneth for the sins of those who have fallen by the transgression of Adam, um, who have died not knowing, not knowing the will of God concerning them, or who have um, ignorantly sinned. But woe, woe, woe unto him, him who knoweth that he rebelleth against God. <laughs> For salvation cometh to none such, except it be through repentance and faith on the Lord Jesus Christ. For the Lord God hath sent his holy prophets among all the children of men, to declare these things to every kindred, nation, and tongue, that thereby whosoever should believe that Christ should come, the same might receive remission of their sins, and rejoice, and rejoice with an exceedingly great joy, even as though he had already come among them. And yet the Lord God saw that his people were a stiff-necked people, and he declared a law unto them, even the law of Moses. And many signs and wonders and types and shadows showed he unto them concerning his coming. And also holy prophets spake concerning his coming. And yet they hardened their hearts and understood not that the law of Moses availeth nothing, save it be through the atonement of his blood. And even, and even though little children could not sin, they could not be, and even if it were possible that little children could sin, they could not be saved. But I say unto you, they are blessed, for behold, even as in Adam, or by nature, they fall. Even so, the blood of Christ atoneth for their sins. And moreover, I say unto you, that there shall be no other name given, nor any other way nor means, whereby salvation can come unto the children of men, only in and through the name of Christ the Lord Omnipotent. For behold, he judgeth, and his judgment is just. And the infant perisheth not that, that dieth in his infancy. But men drink damnation to their own souls, except they humble themselves and, be, and become as little children and believe that salvation was and is and <coughs> is to come through the, atonement, through the atoning blood of Christ the Lord Omnipotent. For the natural man is an enemy to God, and has been from the fall of Adam, and will be forever and ever, unless he yields to the enticings of the Holy Spirit, and putteth off the natural man, and becometh a saint through the blood of Christ the Lord, 
and we come into this child, submissive, meek, humble, patient, full of love, willing to submit to all things which the Lord sees fit to inflict upon him, even as a child would submit to his father. And moreover, I say unto you that the time shall come when the knowledge of a Savior shall spread throughout every nation, kindred, tongue, and people. And behold, when that time cometh, none shall be found blameless before God, except it be little children, only through repentance and faith on the name of, the, of Jesus Christ, the Lord God omnipotent. And even at this time, when thou shalt have taught thy people the things which the Lord thy God hath commanded thee, even then are they found no more blameless in the sight of God, only according to the words which I have spoken unto thee. And now I have spoken the words which the Lord God hath commanded me. And thus, and thus saith the Lord, they shall stand as a bright testimony against his people at the judgment day, whereof they shall be judged, every man according to his works, whether they be good or whether they be evil. And if they be evil, they are confined to an awful view of their own guilt and abomination, which shall cause them to shrink from the presence of the Lord into a state of misery and endless torment, from whence they can no more return. Therefore they have drunk damnation to their own souls. Therefore they have drunk out of the cup of the wrath of God, which justice can no more deny unto them that it could deny that Adam should fall because of his partaking of the forbidden fruit. Therefore, mercy can have claim on their souls no more forever. And their torment is as the lake of fire and brimstone, whose flames are unquenchable, and whose smoke ascendeth up forever and ever. Thus hath the Lord commanded me. Amen. And now, when King Benjamin had made an end of speaking the words which had been delivered unto him by the angel of the Lord, he cast his eyes round about on the multitude. And behold, they had fallen to the earth, for the fear of the Lord had come upon them. And they viewed themselves in their own carnal state, even less than the dusts of the earth. And they cried aloud with one voice, saying, Oh, have mercy on the the atoning blood of Christ, that we may receive forgiveness of our sins, and our hearts may be purified. For we believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who created heaven and earth and all things, who shall come down among the children of men. And when they had spoken these things, they fell to the earth, and they were filled with the Spirit of the Lord, and they had a remission of their sins, and because of the exceedingly great faith in Jesus Christ which should come, King ben- whom King Benjamin had told them of. And King Benjamin opened his mouth again and spake to them and said, My friends and my brethren, my kindred and my people, I would again call, call your attention that ye may hear and remember the word, the remainder of my words which I shall speak unto you. For behold, if the knowledge of the goodness of God at this time has awakened you to a sense of your nothingness and your worthless and fallen state, I say unto you, if ye have come to a knowledge of the goodness of God and his matchless power and his wisdom and his patience and his long suffering towards the children of men, and also the atonement, which has been prepared from the foundation of the world, that thereby salvation might come to him that should put his trust in the Lord, and should be diligent in keeping his commandments, and continue in the faith, even unto the end of his life, I mean the life of the mortal body. I say that this is the man who receiveth salvation, through the atonement, which was prepared from the foundation of the world for all mankind which ever were since the fall of Adam, or who are, or whoever will be, or whoever shall be, even unto the end of the world. And this is the means whereby salvation cometh. And there is none other salvation save that which hath been spoken of. Neither are there any conditions whereby man can be saved, except the conditions which I have told you. Believe in God. Believe that he is and that he created all things, both in heaven and in earth. Believe that he has all wisdom and all power, both in heaven and in earth. Believe that man doth not comprehend all the things which the Lord can comprehend. And again, believe that you must repent of your sins and forsake them, and humble yourselves before God, and ask in sincerity of heart that he will forgive you. And now... If ye believe all these things, see that ye do them. 
And again, I say unto you, as I have said before, that as ye have come to a knowledge of the goodness of God, and um, or if ye do um, know of his goodness and have tasted of his love um, and have received a remission of your sins, which causes it causes exceedingly great joy um, in your souls, even so I would... Um, even so, I would that you should remember and uh, always retain in remembrance the goodness, uh, the goodness of God um, and your own nothingness, your own nothingness and His goodness and long-lasting suffering towards you, um, unworthy creatures, uh, and hoping or. And humble yourselves um, in the deepest um, humility, um, calling upon uh, you, in, calling upon the name of the Lord daily, and standing steadfastly in the um, in the faith of that of which is to come, which was spoken of by the mouth of the, the angel. angel. And behold, I say unto you that if you do this, you shall always rejoice, and be filled with the love of God, and always retain a remission of your sins. And you shall grow in the knowledge of the glory of him that created you, or in the knowledge of that which is just and true. And you will not have a mind to injure one another, but to live peaceably, and to always render to every man according, according to that, that which is his due. And you will not suffer your children, that they go hungry or naked. Neither will you suffer that they transgress the laws of God, and fight and quarrel one with another, and serve the devil, who is the master of sin, or who is that evil spirit which was spoken of by our fathers, he being an enemy to all righteousness. But you will teach your children to love one another, to walk in the ways of truth and soberness. You will teach them to love one another, and to serve one another. And also ye yourselves will succor those that stand in need of your succor, and you will administer of your substance unto him that standeth in need. And ye must suffer that the man who lifteth up his petition to you in vain, and turn him out to perish. Perhaps thou shalt say, This man has brought upon himself his misery. Therefore, I will stay my hand, and not give unto him my substance, nor impart unto him of my food, that he may not suffer, for his punishments are just. But I say unto you, O man, whosoever doeth this, the same hath great cause to repentance. And except he repenteth of that which he hath done, he perisheth forever, and hath no interest in the kingdom of God. For behold, are we not all beggars? Do we not all depend upon the same being, even God, for all the substance which we have, for both for food and raiment, and for gold and for silver, and for all the riches which we have of every kind. And behold, even at this time, ye have been calling on his name and begging for a remission of your sins. And has he suffered that ye have begged in vain? Nay, he has poured his spirit out upon, poured out his spirit upon you, and caused that your heart should be filled with joy, and caused that your mouth should be stopped, that ye could not find utterance. So exceedingly great was your joy. And now, if God, who created you, on whom you are dependent for your lives and for all that you have and are, doth grant unto you that, or whatsoever ye ask, that is right, in faith, believing that you shall receive, um, then, then, oh, then how ye ought to impart of the substance that you have one to another. And if ye judge the man, and if you judge the man who petitioned, who put up his petition unto you for your substance, um, that he perish not, and and you can and condemn him, oh then how great will be your condemnation um, for withholding your substance, which doth not belong to you but to God, who to whom your life also belongeth, yet you. Yet you did not put up your petition, nor repent of the thing which thou hast done. I say unto you, Woe be unto that man, for his substance shall perish with him. And now I say these things unto those who are rich as to the things of this world. And again, I speak unto the poor. You have not, and yet have sufficient, that ye remain from day to day. 
I mean, um, you who um, deny the beggar because ye have not. I would that you say in your hearts that I give not because I have not, but if I had, I would give. And now, if ye say these things in your hearts, ye are condemned. You, you remain guiltless, otherwise ye are condemned, and your condemnation is just, for ye covet that which ye have not received. And now, um, for the sake of these things which I have spoken unto you, that is, for the sake of retaining a remission of your sins from day to day, that ye may walk guiltless before God, I would that ye should impart of your substance to the poor, every man according to that which he hath, such as feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, visiting the sick, and administering to their relief, both spiritually and temporally, according to their wants. And see that these, all these things are done in wisdom and order. For it is not requisite that a man should run faster than he has strength. And again, it is expedient that he should be diligent, for all things must be done in order. And I would that ye should remember that whosoever among you borroweth of his neighbor should return the thing that he borroweth, according as he doth agree, or else thou shalt commit sin, and perhaps thou shalt cause thy neighbor to commit sin also. And finally, I cannot tell you all the things whereby ye may commit sin, for there are diverse ways and means, even so many that I cannot number them. But, but this much I can tell you, that if you do not watch yourselves, and your thoughts, and your words, and your deeds, and observe the commandments of God, and continue in the faith of what ye have heard concerning the coming of our Lord, even unto the end of your lives, ye must perish. And now, O man, remember and perish not. And now it came to pass that when King Benjamin had thus spoken to the people, he sent among them, desiring to know of his people, if they believed the words which he had spoken unto them. And he, they all spake aloud with one voice, saying, Yea, we believe all the words which thou hast spoken unto us. And also we know of their surety and truth, because of the Spirit of the Lord Omnipotent, which has wrought a mighty change in us, or in our hearts, that we have no more disposition to do evil, but to do good continually. And we ourselves also. Through the infinite goodness of God and the manifestations of His Spirit, have great views of that which is to come. And were it expedient, we could prophesy of all things. And it is the faith which we have had on the things which our King has spoken unto us that has brought us to this great knowledge, whereby we do rejoice with such exceedingly great joy. And we are willing to enter into a covenant with our God to do His will and to be obedient to His commandments in all things that He shall command us all the remainder of our days, that we may not bring upon ourselves a never-ending torment that has been spoken by the angel, that we may not drink out of the cup of wrath of God. And now these are the words which King Benjamin desired of them, and therefore he said unto them, Ye have spoken the words that I desire, and the covenant that ye have made is a righteous covenant. And now, because of the covenant that ye have made, ye shall be called the children of Christ, his sons and his daughters. For behold, this day he has spiritually begotten you. For ye say that your hearts have been changed through faith in his name. Therefore, ye are born of him, and have become his sons and his daughters. And under this head ye are made free, and there is no other head whereby ye can be made free. There is no other name given whereby salvation cometh. Therefore, I would that ye should take upon you the name of Christ, all you that have entered into the covenant with God, that ye should be obedient unto the end of your lives. And it shall come to pass that whosoever doeth this shall be found at the right hand of God, for he shall know the name by which he is called, for he shall be called by the name of Christ. And now it shall come to pass that whosoever doeth, whosoever shall not take upon him the name of Christ must be called by some other name. Therefore he is found on the left hand of God. And I would that ye should remember also that this is the name I said that I should give unto you, that never should be blotted out, except it be through transgression. Therefore take heed that ye transgress not, that ye do not transgress that the name be not blotted out of your hearts. I say unto you, I would that ye should remember to retain the name written always in your hearts, that ye are not found on the left hand of God, but that ye hear and know the voice by which ye shall be called, and also the name by which he shall call you. For how knoweth a man the master whom he has not served, and who is a stranger to him, and is far from the thoughts and intents of his heart? And again, doth a man take an ass which belongeth to his neighbor, and keep him? 
I say unto you, Nay, he will not even suffer that he shall feed among his flocks, but will drive him away and cast him out. I say unto you, that even so shall it be among you, if ye know not the name by which ye are called. Therefore, I would that ye should be steadfast and immovable, always abounding in good works, that Christ the Lord God omnipotent may seal you his, that ye may be brought to heaven, that ye may have everlasting salvation and eternal life, through the wisdom and power and justice and mercy of him who created all things, in heaven and in earth, who is God above all. Amen. Amen.